This week we have a lot of language around leprosy, something that is quite foreign to most of us, although it's mentioned 40 times in the Bible. And then it eventually took on a kind of spiritual quality, and that's what we want to reflect on today. So please take a few moments to review the readings for the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time, and then join me here. Our first reading today is from Leviticus 13. It's a kind of medical handbook for the Levitical priests to help them diagnose and then establish quarantine protocols for someone who might have leprosy. Although leprosy wasn't highly contagious in most of its manifestations, it would be dangerous for most small communities and so they had to have rules around people that had leprosy. So lepers dressed in a particular way, lived apart from the community, and had to alert others of their presence. A few years ago, some friends chartered a plane for me to visit the island of Molokai so I could hike down to the remnants of the leper colony there. It was a place of extreme pain and suffering beyond my imaginings. I heard the stories of how lepers would be ferried from a boat anchored offshore and then basically dumped largely to survive on their own in this leper colony. And though provisions were brought by the ships, powerful persons in the camp, fellow lepers, controlled these provisions. Women and children were repeatedly raped and abused. But there were also wonderful stories of courage and compassion. This is the leper colony where Saint Father Damien, a Belgian priest, came to pastor these people. He became the protector of those same women and children. And because of his proximity and passion for souls, Father Damien became infected himself and he died when he was only 49. There's still the chapels there that he built, some of St. Damien's own tobacco plants that he would use just to help him deal with the stench that often came with leprosy. And there are even living lepers still in this colony. Although the effects of leprosy can now be stopped and managed, some of the people who came to Molokai as children in the 20th century chose to remain even after they had good care from the state of Hawaii. Now this is also where a community of sisters came a few years after Father Damien and also served the lepers, the most famous of them, St. Mary Ann Cope, who was a German-born American religious, part of the community of the Sisters of St. Francis of Syracuse. In fact, Mother Marian cared for Father Damien in his final months. And although she also worked in very close proximity to the lepers for over 30 years, she never contracted the disease. Both of these great saints were honored by the royal family of Hawaii and the people in general, and there are monuments throughout Hawaii to them, and even some of their remains are venerated there. I imagine that our psalm that we hear this week was regularly prayed by St. Damien and St. Mary Ann and the many selfless sisters who made their home in Molokai. What do we hear in the response? I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. The way they followed Christ can be imitated by us, no matter where we are. Leprosy, as I mentioned in the beginning, takes on a kind of metaphoric quality. It can represent anything in a person's life that causes them to be put on the outside of a community of faith, to be shunned and shamed. Think about how this pandemic has placed upon us many of these ancient restrictions of a leper. We're quarantined, we're separated, we, we dress now in a very distinctive way. And although these protocols are all important and necessary, their effects upon the community of faith are real and often painful. So it is worth exploring as a parish community how they're impacting the most vulnerable, those already isolated or lonely, and intensifying that pain for them. How can we as a community of faith continue to reach out in new and creative ways? And I see that in so many places here at Holy Spirit Catholic Community. One member of our parish, Gloria, has come up with creative and compassionate ways to reach out to our homebound and elderly in our parish, especially those over 80, to remind them of our love. Her service, like so many others in our community, isn't just because of her love of souls, but also her love of God. And that's what Paul is speaking of today in our second reading from his letter to the Corinthians. Paul says, whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God, seeking not your own benefit, but that of the larger community, that they may be saved. St. Paul closes that by saying, be imitators of me, 
as I am of Christ. How wonderful that we have such a wealth of Christians alive and in heaven, worthy of our imitation, who can inspire us to greater service. All this leads us to our short passage from the Gospel of Mark. As I've said in my series on the glories of the Gospel, Mark is purposely laconic, and yet he gives us many visceral details that you don't always find in the other Gospels. The leper kneeling before him, maybe in worship. The leper's confident statement of faith, if you wish, you can make me clean. And then listen to the details of Jesus. Jesus is moved with pity. The Greek intimates just his deepest innards are impacted, the bowels of compassion, some translations will say, by the the need of this person and his great faith. Jesus stretches out his hand and touches the leper and speaks tenderly, I do will it, be made clean. Now, just like we saw last week, Jesus isn't speaking a word of healing from afar. He's imminently close to those in need. You could say Jesus has great divine bedside manner. I like how the Catechism puts it in the paragraphs that deal with the sacrament of healing. In 1503, in the following paragraphs, it says that Christ's compassion towards the sick and his many healings of every kind of infirmity are a resplendent sign that God has visited his people and that the kingdom of God is close at hand. He has come to heal the whole man, body and soul. He's the physician the sick have need of. And his compassion towards all who suffer goes so far that he identifies himself with them. We hear in Matthew 25, I was, I was sick and you visited me. Jesus' preferential love, it goes on to say, has not ceased throughout the centuries to draw the very special attention of Christians towards all those who suffer in body and soul. Finally, it says that moved by so much suffering in our world, Christ not only allows himself to be touched by the sick, but he makes their miseries his own. As Isaiah prophesied, he took our infirmities and he bore our diseases. Now, typically to touch a leper makes one unclean. And yet Jesus in this story reverses the curse. He makes the unclean clean again. And that was significant for this leper. Remember, he doesn't ask Jesus to heal him, but what? To make him clean. Being unclean meant that he was outside the community. So what is he asking Jesus to do ultimately? Remove the restrictions that this disease brings with it and grant him his deepest longing, which would be to be with those he loves, to be with the people of God in worship. Though commanded to keep this under wraps and simply present himself to the priests so that he might rejoin the community and worship with his friends and family, instead the leper spreads the report abroad. Now, why would Jesus command the leper not to tell anyone? It's a repeated practice of the Lord, especially in the Gospel of Mark sometimes called the messianic secret. Well, there was a real practical reason for that. Around that area, Tiberias being the kind of northern capital for the Romans and for Herod, their political and military leaders were always on the watch for messianic figures, political liberators, zealots. And when they would find them, when they would hear about them, they'd stamp them out very quickly. Jesus' mission, though, was to free people from someone greater than Caesar, from Satan. It wasn't the centurions for him who were the real enemy. It was sin. And so for Jesus' work to bear fruit, he needed precious time. He needed to stay below the radar as much as possible. So you'll see in the Gospels that when Jesus finally does allow people to publicly honor him, to call him by his messianic titles, he's dead within a week. Now, it's hard to blame the leper whose life has been transformed and who would want to share that joy with others. Like last week, this episode has also a kind of Eucharistic quality. Because like the leper in the Mass, we come in faith. We come believing that Jesus can heal us through this salutary sacrament. In fact, the Catechism in that same section that I referenced before says, And so in the sacraments, Christ continues to touch us in order to to heal us. What do we say just before receiving communion? Only say the word and what? My soul shall be healed. And the good news is 
There's no expectation that we keep this to ourselves. Quite the opposite. In our time, Jesus mandates us to be missionaries, to share what he has done with others, with the world, to be a people who bring hope and healing, and to come close to those who've been pushed to the margins. May we as God's people today, as the body of Christ in the world, have the courage and compassion of our Christ. May we imitate the great saints like Saints Marianne and Damien, so that Christ may continue his healing work in our world.